Hi, I'm James Catherall, a co-founder of Catherall Audio, and today we're talking about how to set up reverb in your main stage concerts. I'm going to go through two different methods so you can have some choices on how you're going to utilize reverb inside of your concerts. I'm also going to talk through the benefits of each of the different reverb plugins inside of Mainstage and when you'll want to use each one. Method number one is going to involve adding the reverb in the effects chain of your channel strip. This will be useful when you're only using one specific reverb and you're only using it one time. Because if you're going to keep adding a reverb plugin to each of your different channel strips, that's going to add up quickly with the processing power and it's going to bog down your concert and make it less stable when you're performing. So when you're using reverb across multiple different instruments, you'll typically want to create an aux send so they can all be running to the same reverb plugin and you're not creating multiple different ones inside of your concerts. All right, let's start with method number one inside of our main stage concert. For this video, I'm gonna be using the Moms Piano Instrument from Catherall Audio. Here it is inside of Contact. I'll put the link for the Moms Piano Instrument down in the description so you can download it if you like how it sounds. So here, let's start with just the dry sound and see what that sounds like. So let's work on adding a reverb to that. I'm gonna go down to the audio effects area and at the bottom, this area is gonna turn dark gray and I'm gonna click there and that's gonna create this drop down menu and that's gonna show me all the different effects I can add in and down here we'll see reverb. Mainstage comes with four different reverbs in that category. Chromaverb and Space Designer are a little bit more processor intensive and with Chromaverb it also takes up a little bit more memory as well. Enverb and Silververb are a little bit lighter and take up less processing power. As time goes on, computers are getting much more powerful and so adding plugins like this isn't as intensive as it used to be in the past like six or seven years ago. So you don't have to worry as much if you're adding Chromaverb or Space Designer. You can use it a few times in your concert. Just make sure you keep that in mind. And if you notice that your concert is starting to use a lot of CPU power or it's starting to slow down, then maybe you might want to look at replacing some of those chroma verbs and space designers with something like Enverb or Silververb. For this one, I'm going to go with Space Designer, and here's that plugin. Up at the top left portion of the plugin, right here, I can click on this drop down menu, and this will show me some of the presets that I can pick from Space Designer. It has them in different categories. I'm going to go up to Large Spaces and then Halls and it even has them organized by the how long the tail of the reverb is. I'm gonna go down to Fine Hall. So now let's test that out and see what that sounds like. So I think that one has a little bit too much reverb. It sounds pretty washed out and I can't really hear the original piano sound anymore. So what I wanna do when I have it in the effects chain is I'm gonna look at that dry and wet knob or the dry and wet sliders. So in here in this plugin, you can see here's my dry fader and here's my wet fader. So the dry sound is that original source instrument that you've loaded in main stage. And then the wet sound is gonna be that reverb affected part of it. So if you want more of the reverb sound, you wanna pull the wet up. If you want less of the reverb sound, pull the wet down. So here I'm gonna pull this wet slider down to there. And now let's try that. There we go, I like that one a lot better. So you wanna make sure when you're setting up reverbs in your effects chain, you're dialing in that dry and wet level so that it's in a place that you like. And sometimes it might be just a knob as well, where if you turn the knob all the way one way, it'll be completely dry. If you turn it all the way the other way, it'll be completely wet. All right, now let's get started on creating the reverb as an effects send. Now, just below the audio effects, right here it says sends. That's what I'm gonna use for my reverb. I'm gonna click on the dark gray area and then over here where it says bus, and I'm gonna go up to bus number one. And now when we create these sends, what it's actually doing is just adding in an aux channel strip in your main stage concert. And now that original channel strip is getting sent to this aux channel strip. And we're gonna place that reverb in the aux channel strip. So here's my aux channel strip. And I can add the reverb in two different ways. Up at the top, it says setting. I can click right there. And there's actually some preset reverb channel strips that I can load inside of main stage. Or I can just add the reverb plugin myself by going down to the audio effects area, clicking on the drop down menu, and then selecting one of the reverbs that I want. So let's go with the space designer again. And let's load that same fine hall under large spaces, halls, and then fine hall. 
So typically when I'm setting up a reverb as an aux send, I'm gonna pull that dry signal all the way down because it's still coming from the original channel strip. So I don't need that dry signal to be up anymore. What I'm only gonna mess with is the wet level. So let's start by pulling this one all the way up. I'm also gonna change the name of this aux channel strip by double clicking at the bottom. And I'm gonna call this Hall Reverb. And now we can see on our original channel strip, it's changed it to say Hall. So I know that that's my Hall Reverb send. And we have one final step before we're actually gonna hear the reverb on our piano instrument. On the right side, we see this little half circle. That is how much of the signal is getting sent to this Hall Reverb. So I can click and drag this up or down and we'll see it start filling blue. And that's how much of the signal is getting sent over to that reverb. I can also double click and then type in a number and that can also change the send level. And now let's play and test that out. There you go. So that's how you'd set up your reverb as an aux send. And as you add more channel strips, you can just go to the send area and then send it to that same bus one again so it's still using the same reverb. And that can help a lot with saving processing power in your concerts. Let's check out a couple more options in that send area. Right here where it says hall, if I click on this button on the right side and hold it, this drop down menu is gonna appear and we'll see these three options, post pan, post fader, and pre fader. Post pan means that the signal is gonna get affected by the pan setting of the channel strip and by the fader of the channel strip. So as you change those, it'll change where the reverb send is coming from and how loud the reverb is as well. If you select just post fader, that means it won't get affected by the pan setting, but it'll still be affected by the fader. And then the last one, pre-fader, if you select that, the send won't get affected by the fader or by the pan settings. It'll always stay the same. And to make it easy to quickly tell the difference between each of them, this little area is gonna change appearance based off of which one you have selected. The default is post-fader, but if I go to post-pan, the circle turns green. And if I go to pre-fader, the circle moves on the left side. So that can make it helpful at a quick glance to tell what setting you have for that send. One thing that I think is cool when you're using these aux sends for reverbs and different effects is it allows you to craft that sound a little bit more without affecting your original source sound. So let's look into that and see what I mean. So here's my reverb and if I go below it, I can click on the start gray area and I can add in a channel EQ. And now I can EQ just the reverb without affecting the original piano sound. So I can turn on a low cut and pull that up. And I can turn on a high cut and pull that down. And I can help clear up that reverb sound so it doesn't muddy up your mix too much. I'm gonna add one more so we can make it really obvious and hear what's happening when we affect just the reverb and not the original source sound. I'm gonna go down below the channel EQ and add in a pitch shifter plugin and I'm gonna drop it down 12 semitones and drink, bring the mix up to 100. And now let's play this and we'll hear that the reverb is dropped down an octave, but the original piano sound is not. So that was just a demonstration so you can clearly hear what's happening, but that can be really useful to actually craft that reverb a little bit more. And that's how you set up reverb inside of your main stage concerts. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you have any main stage topics you'd like to see us cover in a future video, leave a comment down below. And we'll see you in the next one.